in part two of the advanced features for SQL processing. We're going to be looking at the select statement and this is a part of the information technology grade 12 cap syllabus. Now if you remember the previous videos we have been working with a database called the CD database and in it there are two main tables. There is the owner table which has details about the owners and there you can see their names and their date of birth and so on. And the other table that is in the CD database is the CD table and it contains details about all the different CDs. So the artist, the CD name, the replacement value as well. So we are going to be doing some SQL select statements with some advanced features on these two particular examples. Now the first thing that we're going to use is calculated field. This is when we want to do a calculation based on the information in the database. And this is very important because if there is information that you can calculate using the information in the database, then there is no actual need to store that information manually. For example, there's no point to storing the age in a database or a table because that age will always be changing. But if we store the date of birth, then that makes a bit more sense. Then we've got the date of birth, we can always calculate the age using that information. So how do we do these calculations? So let's start off with a very simple calculation. We are going to work out the VAT on the replacement value and the VAT here is 14%. So you take whatever the value is of the item and you times it by 1.14. 1 being the full value of the item and the dot one four is the 14 percent extra for the VAT part. Now because we are creating a particular field we need to give this field a name and that's where we use the as part and we've used it in the previous video for the table name but we're using it here for the field name to say whenever we have this calculation this field name must be called with underscore VAT. And all of this information is from the CD table. So let's have a look at how we do this inside an SQL database. So here is our two tables, the CD table and the owner table. And we're going to create a query using query design. And we're going to add no tables because we're going to go straight to the SQL. There we go. So we want to see the details of the CD. So we're going to put in the CD name. Okay, I should probably put a space after the select so it doesn't give me an error. After the select, I said, not the T. There we go. So we've got the CD name. Now we're going to add the replacement value of that CD. And before we get to the calculator phase, let's just see if it all works. And we're getting this from the CD table. And we've got no where clause. So let's just leave it at that. So if I run it. There we go, the CD name and the replacement value. Now let's pretend this is just the standard replacement value and we want to find out what is the total with that. So we want to find out what that is. So it's working 14% added on to that value. So for example, this uh, a name bo uh, boy named Gu, if it's 100 Rand, then it will be 140 Rand because it will be 14% of 100, which will be 14 Rand, and we add that on to the 100. So if we go back to the SQL, we are going to now create an calculated field and we can use our normal numbers we can use our normal operators like plus and minus and all that in times and we can use the names of the fields that we've already got there so we're going to take the replacement value take whatever's in it and we're going to multiply it by 1.14 so there I've got three fields I've got the name I've got the replacement value and I've got this calculated field which is that whole thing there so let's run it and there we go. So we've, for example, let's test a name, a boy named Gu. It's 100. Ah, uh, it's 114. That is correct. But the only problem, one of the things I don't like about this is this EXPR10 blah blah blah. I don't like what that looks like. So we are going to use the as field after the calculated field, as, and this is where we can specify what name must go at the top of this field. So I'm going to say with underscore that. So now when we run it with the as, you'll see now there's a nice little title above it in the field name. I know this doesn't look nice with the currency, but we're going to learn how to do the formatting soon. So there we go. Let's just double check our calculator fields. There we go. You just type in using your operators and you use the as field to change the name of that field. 
Now, as I said, I don't like the way that looked with the currency. It just had a normal number. If we want to add the, or change the format of that particular field, we can do this. And you can actually, instead, of, although we're using the calculated field here, as you can see, replacement value times 1.14, you could do the formatting on any field. Let's say replacement value by itself wasn't formatted correctly. We could actually just have a replacement value there without having a calculated field. But we are going to use the format uh, function and we're going to take our calculated field and convert it to a currency and then we've still got the as with that part. So let's go try that out. So here we've got the exact same example. So in front of the calculated field I'm going to use the keyword format and I'm going to put the calculation inside the, the two brackets. And then we've got the as with that at the end. But it needs two things. It needs the field name or the calculated field. And it also needs to tell me what type of format are we changing it to. So I'll put a comma and then I in double quotes I'm going to say currency. If I've spelled that correctly. I'll just put that in double quotes. And if I run it, there you can see our with that is now not looking nice as a currency. That format field can also work for lots of different things. There's currency, there's fixed, a lot of different options for you. There's also a format for dates. So if you want to change what a date looks like, you can always say format and then the field name, in this case date of birth, and then in double quotes the format that you want. So there we've got two spaces for or two characters for the day, two characters for the month and two characters for the year. So that would typically do a month or a date in the format of 0101. 12 for example so that's how you can do a date there are lots of different combinations you could start with a year and end with the day that type of thing other types of functions that we get in sql um, is the round this is if we want to round something so we're going to instead of formatting we're going to round it to two decimal places and let's see what that looks like so yeah we've got our sql query in front of the replacement i'm going to say round and I'm going to put my calculated field inside the brackets. And remember, we need two things. We need the field or the field calculation and to how many decimal places. So we want to round to two decimal places. And there we go. It looks like it's rounded to two decimal places, even though it's not showing it. We will probably have to view it as a currency to see that it's been rounded. Let's change it to zero decimal places and see what that does. There we go, and you can see that it's taken all the decimals away and it's rounded up where possible or rounded down depending on if it's a five or greater. And there you can see it's all those numbers have been rounded. So that is when we have to zero decimal places. You could have two decimal places and so on and so on. Another function is the int function or the it makes it an integer. So it takes whatever's in or whatever value you put inside the brackets and it will just take away the decimal values. It doesn't round it up or anything, it just takes away the decimal values. So let's add an int over here. So we say int open bracket. That's only one parameter, so I can just keep the value in there. And if we run it, there we can see the decimal places have been taken away. Some of them, are, as you can see, they haven't been rounded up or down or anything. They've just removed the decimal values. Another function that you can use, maybe we want to display that number with some text around it. So we need to convert the number or the value into some sort of string. There is a string function where you just say str and then the value inside it and that will be converted to a string. And what's nice about that is you can actually add other strings onto it. So you can say for is owed for example. So let's try that out. So we're going to take that calculated field and put an str in front of it. So it converts it to a string and then we're going to add on a text that says is owed, for example. Remember, notice I'll put a space first before I say is owed because we don't want the is to be right against the value. We want to have a nice little space. So let's have a look at what that looks like. And there we go. So it has the string value is owed. So there we have it. We've learned about calculated fields and how we can format what they look like. So we've changed the format, we've rounded them, we've removed the decimal values and we've converted them to a string. In our other videos coming up, we'll have a look at other functions that you can use in your calculated fields as well as just your general fields of how you can extract data and stuff like that. So have a look at the other videos for more functions in SQL.
part one and the other parts to this video series can be found at Mr. Long Video Education. There is the website address. Please subscribe. We'd love to hear your comments because we'd love to improve on our videos. Also, if it's been helping you out, we'd love to hear how they've helped you out. And also, if you want to follow our Twitter account, we can find out when we upload new videos. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way. The examples from today's video come from the Gray 12 Delphi eNotes that were supplied by Study Opportunities. The, uh, these eNotes are available in 2014. In 2015, a textbook will be available with the entire Gray 12 CAP syllabus. If your teacher is interested in getting these textbooks, then contact them on their website.